Hi, welcome to Movie Review Mom. I'm the mom and I do the movie reviews. My goal is to give you the heads up on the content and quality of films that are coming out so that you can decide if they're worth spending your time or your money on. And by the way, people always ask me how they can support me. And so the first thing that's super easy is to simply subscribe and like this video. It actually really helps me a lot. You can also run over to my Patreon channel and support me there. And I truly appreciate it. All right, enough about that. Let's talk about the movie. Today, the movie I'm reviewing is Wolf Walkers. This is available on Apple TV starting December 11th, 2020. The movie is rated PG. It's an hour and 43 minutes. And the movie review mom grade I'm giving it is an A. It's just lovely. Let me give you a quick overview in a nutshell. I'll point out some tips for parents, things I liked and didn't like, as well as themes that are worth discussing. And then I'll give you some suggestions questions at the end. Okay, so in a nutshell, if you love all things Irish, Renaissance festivals, and Studio Ghibli, this Apple original film kind of looks and feels like a lovely combination of all of those things. Add the voice of Sean Bean. Yes, please. <laughs> this is a magical animation from the Academy Award nominated makers of The Secret of Kells and The Song of the sea and based on Irish folklore. And although I haven't seen those two movies specifically, I have read reviews of people who say that they think that this one is even better than those two. It was directed by Tom Moore and Ross Stewart, becoming the first animated feature to be nominated for Best International Feature at the Gotham Awards. The film is dedicated to Mark Stewart, who passed away this year. Cartoon Saloon continues to pump out beautiful animation films that are pretty close to visual masterpieces, and this one absolutely is. So let me give you some tips for parents. This is a perfect family-friendly film that all ages can enjoy. Now, a heads up for parents that wolves attack people and people attack wolves. And you might need to talk to young children about magic and imagination, things that are real versus things that are not real. And when my kids were little, we would play a game and I would say, is this real or not real? And I would say different things and they would have to decide. And I thought that that was super helpful. But of course, I've, I've also encouraged my kids to use their imagination and to believe in magic with a wink of the eye. Now, some themes that are illustrated and addressed in the movie are friendship, courage, tolerance, humanity, humans versus nature, family, female empowerment. Of course, almost every movie nowadays is all about female empowerment. And then the creators of the film actually explained that colonialism is the real villain in the movie and is what separated the protagonists from nature. And I'll talk more about that in just a minute, which is really an interesting concept. First of all, some things that I really liked about it. The concept art is just beautiful and mesmerizing. It's refreshing to see two-dimensional and underappreciated hand-drawn animation. The colors and geometric shapes are extremely enchanting, making each frame a piece of art to be studied. Now, one of my sons is a 3D animation artist for Blizzard. He specifically works on the World of Warcraft video game, and I'm so proud of him. He's so talented, and he's doing what he loves, and what mother wouldn't want more than that for a son to be productive and happy and successful and doing what he loves? Anyway, he has really taught me to appreciate hand-drawn animation, and you want to point that out to your kids, especially if they're watching it, because we're all used to to slick Disney and Pixar and DreamWorks animation. And this is very different. 
And so point out how they can appreciate both styles of animation. You really get a sense of Ireland in the 1600s. And you can almost feel how damp the green forest is in animation. Visually, the movie also illustrates the cage that women of that day might have felt that they were in. There are lots of angles and even black lines that represent society's rules that trapped Robin, the young heroine in the story. So visually, there's this subtle message of how trapped she really felt. Honor Nefsi, and I hope I pronounced her name correctly, voices the enthusiastic Robin Goodfellow, and she just does a fantastic job. Eva Whitaker lends her spunky voice to another character, Medby Og McTire. You'll hear it lots in the movie, but uh, that's the name that is actually assigned to the character, but they just call her by her first name. The humor is both visual and spoken, and the British and Irish accents of the characters are just super cute. Visually, the story features the contrast and stark differences between the magic of nature and that of the Lord Protector's rigid religious fervor in the city. The film's creators explained that the type of Puritan religion that Lord Cromwell brought to Christianity emphasized man over nature instead of a balance between the two, domination versus submission. Whenever the story spotlights what's happening in the forest, the colors are light and green. And to show the duality of thinking at the time, the city scenes feature gray tones in the color palette. And I think that that's really clever. And there's also very clever framing devices. So look for those. The film knows when to be silent and to let the audience bask in the beauty. And I appreciate what's said as well as what's not said visually. I love the scene that shows Mabe the wolf walker as she meets literally melts um, Robin's lap while she gets her hair brushed by her new human friend. It's so sweet. And it's really interesting to see the softening of certain characters and the intensity of certain characters as they shift. Now, there were a few things that I didn't like, but not very much. First of all, the father shows warmth to his daughter occasionally, but he never listens to her. Now, let that be a lesson to all of us parents to listen. And that's not really a reflection on the movie. It's just a comment that I get frustrated when I see children have something important to say and their parents just dismiss them because they're either too busy or they don't think that what's going to be said is important or relative to what they need to know. I also really hate it when religious people in movies are shown as just terrible people and very inflexible, very rigid, and really lacking love. Now, I could get onto a whole rant about Christianity. I am a Christian, and we should be even more loving and kind and tolerant and flexible than anyone if we really understand Christ's message to love one another. So I just, I hate that when it shows these religious people who are just such hypocrites, and I know that they exist, absolutely, but I hope people don't judge Christianity based on hypocrites. Really, Every religion has hypocrites in their religion. And so to understand that the portrayal of this particular religious man who's the leader of this town is really um, a result or a product of his time. Again, the movie is supposed to take place in the 1600s in Ireland, where religion was a very dominant force, uh, Catholicism and Protestantism specifically. So it's important to understand that. All right. I always write down interesting lines and funny lines as I watch movies, and I post them on my website, moviereviewmom.com. So you can go over there if you want to see the rest of my review, but I'll share just a few of them with you right here, right now. So Robin, the main protagonist in this story, is actually working and cleaning, and the head housekeeper says to her, work is prayer, girl. And I thought, that's such an insightful, profound 
sentence. And it's true. We should work with gratitude in our hearts. First of all, that we have work and income and something meaningful to do with our lives. And then another really interesting conversation was between the father and daughter, Bill, voiced by the fantastic Sean Bean and the daughter, whose name is Robin, voiced by Honor Neefsi. And he says to her, we must do what we're told. And the daughter says, why? And he says, I'm afraid. And I think that that's a really interesting topic for today as we are going through this pandemic and how much fear has played into the decisions that are being made. Now, I'm not going to get into the politics of you know, wearing masks, not wearing masks. And I know people are dying and people are hurting and struggling. So anyway, I just thought it was interesting and timely. Now I want to recommend two movies to you. The first one is Brave. And of course, I thought of that one instantly because it's a Disney princess movie that features a girl in Scotland. It's adorable. And if you haven't seen that, you'll love it. And the second movie is called Kiki's Delivery Service, featured by Studio Ghibli, which is an amazing studio. My son, who is that animator at Blizzard, just loves all things Japan. So we finally got to go there as a family and we visited Studio Ghibli and it's amazing. So I highly recommend that. The movie Princess Mononoke may be more similar because of the forest aspect and the magical creatures and that kind of thing. Um, However, there is a magical creature in Kiki's Delivery Service. Anyway, I highly recommend Studio Ghibli for the artistry alone. It's really great. Okay, that's it for my movie review today. I hope you enjoy this movie. If you see it, I'm pretty sure you will. And until the next movie review, bye for now.